Namaste. So here we are at the conclusion of the fourth canto. And what is the fourth canto about? Well, Shankaracharya says in the introduction that this canto is begun to show the cause of the non-perception of Brahman. Because if Brahman is hidden in everything, as described in the first canto, then how come we don't perceive him? Why aren't we aware of Brahman? And of course, the short answer is our own thoughts, our own mind is in the way. Because we project, we overlay, we superimpose our ideas, our names and forms on the world. And of course, the world is based on Brahman. And so Brahman doesn't show up for us because he's blocked. So I want to share with you the practice that I do for approaching the presence of Brahman in the heart. Several times in this chapter, they have mentioned the Lord in the heart. And by Lord, the word used is Purusha, this is where a lot of people get confused because Purusha can mean Lord as in the root cause of everything, uh, the controller or commander of everything, but it can also mean a person, a man. Really, the root of the word means one who fills everything. In other words, the all-pervasive Brahman, which is just what we're talking about. But a lot of people take it that it means a person. Just take a look here at the Sanskrit dictionary entry for Purusha. See, there are so many definitions. And very prominent among them are the definitions that say Purusha is a person. So people get all confused. And because of their habit of projecting, they like to project their favorite deities onto Brahman. Now, this is an upadi, and technically it's called Ishatvam upadi, that this is the Lord of the universe, Krishna or Rama or Shiva or Shakti or any other god, you know, take your pick according to your taste. And yes, you can, in the beginning stages, use an image like this to approach the Lord in the heart. But you're not going to meet him that way. <laughs> Why? Because the very projection of that thought gets in the way and obscures the real image of Brahman. And what is that? Well, it's something that everyone can experience for themselves. And I strongly encourage you to try this. And the way it works is that you find a quiet place where you won't be interrupted, where you're private, maybe even hidden. Nobody knows you're there. And you won't have anybody coming in and trying to impose their trip on your state of mind because you're going to be in a very vulnerable state. Why? You have to take off all the coverings, all the upadis from the mind, from yourself, actually. And that includes your name, your body, your senses, even your mind. And of course, the mind is very difficult to quell because the mind is like a monkey jumping here and there, chattering da, 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 all the time. So how do you get the mind to quiet down? Well, you just have to relax it. You have to relax the body, sink deep into the heart, and relax the mind, and especially desires. Because desires are the thing that keeps us extroverted, out in the world, looking for enjoyment, 
when the real enjoyment that we're searching for is within. Krishna, speaking for Brahman in Bhagavad Gita, says, Ye yata mang prapadyante. As they approach me, I reciprocate accordingly. So, if you approach God with love, he will reciprocate or she will reciprocate. And this is one of the most amazing and astonishing things. I mean, it's really the quintessence of yoga. Yoga means linking, connecting, hooking up. So when one hooks up with Brahman in the heart, with the self, with the Purusha, the master of the universe, then you can feel the reciprocation of Brahman. You can experience it directly. It's not just a theory. It's not just a nice theological argument. <laughs> No, this is a real thing. So, if you need to use an image of some deity, which is a metaphor, of course, because Brahman is ultimately not really a person, does not have a form, but if that image arouses love in your heart, if you admire the qualities of that image, whichever one you pick, whichever you prefer, according to your taste. See, this is the karma kanda part of the Vedas, and it's duality. It's just openly described in the Vedas that the worship of the form of God is duality. Well, of course it is. It has to be. Anything with form is in duality. Anything that is perceived outside oneself is duality. And even the worship of Brahman in the heart is still duality, but because it's Brahman, it's Saguna Brahman, the secondary or inferior Brahman, Shakti. The way you approach Shakti, the way you approach Brahman, don't think of it as a person. And don't think of yourself as a person. Let go all of these identifications, all of the labels, all of the designations, and especially all of your desires. Because you will find, once you get in contact especially, you, you can very easily see whenever a thought arises in the mind, and especially a desire, it obscures the light of Brahman. So, as you concentrate your mind, you should see this light. It could be diffuse. It could be several points winking on and off or twinkling like stars. And uh, usually they're white or blue or sometimes red color. That's how it begins. And after a while, you'll see many of these. And when it comes to... <laughs> to be thousands and thousands of them, like scattered all over your visual surface in meditation. That's how you know you're in touch with Brahman. Brahman does not appear as like a single blinding light, <laughs> like the headlight of an oncoming train. <laughs> no, Brahman appears little by little, gradually in the form of many small lights, but then they gather together and form one big light. And you will see, I mean, it's really clear how every time a thought comes up in your mind, or especially a desire, it will dim that light. It will occlude it. It will cover it. And then as soon as you're able to let go that thought and return your attention to Brahman, then it becomes clear again. So if you approach Brahman with love, and that could be any flavor of love, neutrality, which is like awe and veneration, or servitorship, friendship, parenthood, or conjugal love, romantic love, doesn't matter. Brahman will reciprocate in kind. That's his promise in Bhagavad Gita, and he's good for that promise. So this is the medicine 
This is the cure for the suffering of material existence. To come in contact with Brahman in the heart, with the self, the Purusha, and enjoy the rasas of love and affection, and slowly, slowly merge with him and become one. Because tattvamasi, you are Brahman. Aham brahmasmi, I am Brahman. Remove the coverings and you will see Brahman in everything. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.